The Tokyo Motor Show will take place at the end of October and it looks like Honda will take the opportunity to launch their models for 2020. But although the new Africa Twin and Adventure Sport have been grabbing the headlines recently, it's a slightly more diminutive off-roader that might well steal the limelight. In the press release previewing their stand at the show, Honda included this photo of a CT125 concept bike. It's essentially a scrambler version of their iconic Super Cub, which itself was rebooted last year. Honda says it proposes the new value of the Honda Super Cub series through its structure, designed while giving due consideration to off-road run-through performance, and the exterior design which stimulates the adventurous spirit of riders. I'm not sure about the quality of that translation, but I think you get the gist, it's a super cub that's designed for a bit of a thrashing. But what about the bike it's built upon? In case you haven't seen the Super Cub updated for 2018, let me summarise. It's a modern take on a low-budget utilitarian bike that has incredibly sold over 100 million units to date. The white fairing is instantly recognisable from the original, but the new C125 adds a bunch of modern touches like cast aluminium wheels in place of spokes, disc brakes with front ABS instead of drums, a part digital display, keyless ignition with immobiliser and alarm, and LED lighting. It's powered by an air-cooled single-cylinder four-stroke two-valve 125cc motor which is shared by the revamped Monkey Bike and the Grom and it's capable of just under 10 horsepower and 10 newton meters of torque. All of this grunt is transferred to the road through a four-speed gearbox and it uses a centrifugal automatic clutch which means you don't need to use your left hand when you want to come to a stop or move off. In fact, there's no clutch lever at all despite the fact that you still operate the gears with the heel-toe shifter on your left foot. So if the CT125 did ever make it to the market, we can expect pretty much the same spec and probably a similar price to the £3,399 of the Super Cub. But what's different about the Scrambler concept? There are some obvious styling changes like the removal of the fairing and headlight shroud and a boxier looking frame and mug guards. Even items like the indicators have been squared off to make things look tougher and more Scrambler-esque. As for off-road credentials, the cast aluminium wheels have been swapped out for spokes that should cope better with harsh undulations, and they're shod with some semi-knobbly tyres which could offer a bit more grip on loose surfaces. But in reality, the knobblies and spokes are probably as much of a styling exercise than they are intended to take on serious trails. The exhaust has been lifted above the engine and covered with a huge perforated heat shield, whilst the air intake duct and cleaners have also been lifted higher. This will help the bike to avoid inhaling water and mud, but a water crossing on the CT125 might be reserved for the braver riders amongst us. Crash bars are also visible, which will help to protect the bike from drop damage in the absence of the white plastic fairing. And like the Super Cub, this concept has a rear rack, albeit a fair bit bigger. The Super Cub rack option can also take a pillion seat conversion, which might be the case if the CT makes it to production. So there's plenty to distinguish it from the Super Cub, but a Cub Scrambler isn't entirely a new idea. The Trail Cub has appeared in various iterations over the years, and you can certainly see where Honda have carried over some of its style into the new concept, such as the stripped back look, bright red colour scheme, and full length perforated exhaust guard. Honda have also been selling a similarly off-road inspired Cross Cub in Japan, available with either a 110 or 50cc engine. Perhaps these bikes have proved popular and inspired Honda to work on a new concept for other markets. Personally, I absolutely love the look of it. Despite its off-road aspirations, it could be a great little second bike for zipping around town, especially with the big rear rack for carrying duties and an economical little motor to keep the fuel costs down. It looks a bit more tough than the current Super Cub and I think, therefore, that more people could get on board with the styling of this one. What do you guys make of it? To me, it certainly seems a better option than a generic looking scooter for town duties. I'm not sure if I'd bother taking it green laning, although it's pretty lightweight and looks robust. Would you take this over the standard Super Cub? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I always enjoy hearing your thoughts. And if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.